you have a question, when I point at you, stand up, say the question loudly and clearly, and then we'll get the response. You're first. Uh, out of all the voices you play, played, uh, or all the characters you've played, which ones do you like the most? Sorry, is this for Andrea? Yeah. Oh, oh, not for both of you. Oh, okay. I assumed by the outfit it was just for you. You don't need to, but... You don't know me. Okay. Okay, so out of all the characters you, you've played over the years, uh, which one's your most favorite and which one is the one you want to put in the blender? <laughs> Does Hasbro make you say you love all your characters? <laughs> um, and thank you to Tyler for making that precedent. For whatever it's worth, I haven't signed anything with Hasbro, so I don't think I have the same stipulations, but um, I've, uh, I've loved playing uh, Hisoka on Hunter x Hunter, um, Tien on Dragon Ball, and now Dragon Ball Kai. Uh, you know who I've actually really loved is playing uh, Kareda, the handsome prince on DigiCarrot Neo, because that's been the most insane show I've ever done. <laughs> I haven't seen it, so I don't know. I don't know who has, but... <laughs> scared at six-year-olds that also like psychedelia. That would be everyone. It's a huge idea. Six-year-olds with nice parents. Yeah. Six-year-olds with... <laughs> yeah. Anyways. You? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> she what? knows what she has to say. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorites that actually is, uh, was playing Madeline. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's like a special one. And I guess playing Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, like, that's all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's awesome. It's amazing. Nothing for the blender. <laughs> Just gold only. Right? <laughs> Very diplomatic. Yeah. Thank you. Next question. You. Um, if you could change one thing about the show My Little Pony, what would it be? I'd probably put me in it. <laughs> <laughs> only so that I could do conventions with Andrea. So. <laughs> Right now, I think my scope's a little limited. So I want one breakout cult hit. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? It might be worth it. I haven't seen that sweet, sweet Hasbro piggy bank yet, so. What did I say about the followers? Go, 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 is there anything you would change? Well, yeah, I would add you, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chemistry. <laughs> All right, good question there. Yeah, just a question uh, with regards to ensemble uh, voice casting. Uh, do you guys have any good or amusing stories that stand out to you? Because uh, I know some of the people in the booth can be real pranksters. <laughs> real pranksters? Real pranksters. Like, yeah, 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 no, okay, I just want to make sure I heard you right. Uh, I think Prelay and, and Walla is my favorite part of recording because otherwise you're always alone in the booth, just you and the director and the engineer. So when there's other people there, I'm probably a bit of the prankster because that's the most fun time I ever have is, is when you're, you're doing the background dialogue or you're doing the in the moment um, conversations and, and you just, you get to Acting is reacting, right? So when you're reacting to yourself or to a picture, it's way different than another organic human being. So I love that stuff. I, I have the most fun when there's other people in the booth with me. I have the best picture from when I was, the first show I ever did was Dino Babies. And I have a picture of everyone in the booth, so I was about seven or eight years old. And all the voice actors have bunny ears in their headphones that they've made out of Aww. their scripts. So, <laughs> everybody's a real... Prankster. I wreck my scripts <laughs> yeah. because they stay for the next actors. So I always put something on the cover about me. Um, so my character is presenting this show starring me. And, <laughs> and then I'll put little messages throughout the script so as people are flipping through, they're like, oh, what's, what's this note about? 
Uh, who wrote that? We don't know. What's but, this inappropriate? Yeah, yeah. Did, did someone change my line? Is that, a, is that accurate? I don't do that so much. But uh, with, if, with wall of sessions, which, where you have a whole bunch of people in the booth, sometimes it, it can get out of hand, and then you can make little in-jokes for the other people. Because obviously you're in a booth, your director can't see anything, so you're writing messages to each other in this script, and everyone's trying to be professional as, as well. <laughs> Ow, that, that's, that's so much fun to me. Making cartoons, honestly, that's so much fun. It's okay. <laughs> uh, so we had a question over there, Fluttershy. Oh, um, this is for Brendan. Um, you did TN in Dragon Ball Z, but when I tried to find you, I couldn't really find anything? Not Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Kai. The Dragon Ball Z one was before I joined with the studio, and so I've been doing it since then. Okay, so like what dub specifically did you do? Because there's so many dubs for Dragon Ball. Like, right, uh, well, I mean, I Funimation is the ones that get to distribute the DVDs, the US company, and I don't work for them. But the one that was on YTV for years, and I think the one that's uh, shown in other English-speaking countries besides the US, okay. that's where our dub would have been the, uh, the available version. Okay. But when it came to DVDs, that one company in the States got exclusive rights. Oh, okay. okay, thank you. And possibly Rainbow Dash. Yeah. <laughs> Who is Gus Pony? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, is that for me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm being fed lines over here. <laughs> um, I've only just started watching the show. <gasps> no, because... Congratulations. Because I was so enamored with this, this fandom for, for Friendship is Magic that I, I, I realized I had to seek this thing out. So after figuring out that this show is bigger than any show I'll ever be on. I, I have a three-year-old daughter, and, and it's like the perfect thing for us to watch together, because now I get it. Now I get why it, it translates between adults and males and, and children and, and both genders. And so, I mean, I'm just kind of getting to know the show, so I don't really have a, maybe a strong opinion yet, but I really love Pinkie Pie. I hate him to say that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite pony? Did you just smile enough? Well, I like my ponies. Uh, what's that wrong? Big Mac? No. Yeah. Um, what's the community aspect like of voice acting? How often do you run into people that you've worked with before? Well, you're based in Vancouver, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm based here in Calgary. So, I mean, you go to the studio, you... you I mean, the acting community in Calgary is pretty small. So I see those people at all other kinds of work as well, radio and TV and all the other auditions and work I do. So for me, it's, it's easy. The community here is just not that large. But in Vancouver, it's a bit different. Well, I think the voice acting community is really small in Vancouver too, surprisingly uh -huh. so. So it's, um, yeah, it's all the same faces and awesome people. It's good, it's lucky we have great, great people. Some of these shows go for years. Like you record like 150 episodes over three years, so it can be a long relationship. So whether you like it or not, but <laughs> <laughs> well, we always like it. <laughs> okay, on this side, you. No, yeah, you. Yeah. Um, you said you started when you were seven. So how does that? Did someone say, "Oh my gosh, you'd be great for voice. You'd be great for voice." How did that start? How did that happen? I started in film and TV, oh, okay. uh, and then just kind of moved on. Oh, you know how to read. <laughs> I'm serious and read this in front of a microphone and then my voice didn't really ever change <laughs> the years keep passing <laughs> slightly bit in there uh, Captain um, when maybe tilt the mask up <laughs> Captain doesn't tilt up his yeah, mask yeah well we can't hear the captain that's it much better <laughs> <laughs> but the style is so awkward. Uh, when uh, Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy are having a conversation, do you record one of them, then record the other, or do you just talk to yourself? <laughs> I just talk to myself like a crazy face. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, you do yeah, you and the... Yeah, you flip back and forth. Mm -hmm. okay. um, this one's for Andrea. I was wondering if you'd be okay with uh, My Little Pony movie. I'd be very okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys be okay with that? Um, this is just a general voice actor like, question. How, how do you get into it? Well, they do... Um, <laughs> Voodoo rituals. <laughs> uh, I mean, they do open casting calls just to see who's new in the market and... Uh, uh, I mean, that's how I got into it, and my uh, brother and I both went down to a, just like an open audition that the local studios were doing, which they do maybe once or twice a year, and we both got signed, and then we've both been doing work since, so that was how it worked for me. I, you've kind of already answered your way you got in. A lot of people um, will do up a demo and shop it around to agencies. Yeah. Okay. The local good. market's smaller. So that's not really maybe the way it's done here in town, just because there's a few places to go to, and after that, you know, why would you spend a few hundred bucks on a demo? But out in larger markets, and if you want to get into international voicing, yeah, that's a great way of doing it as well. Yeah, thank you. You. Um, as Canadian voice actors, would there be like a specific area you'd recommend going to break out into voice acting, like for Vancouver or Toronto or even Calgary, for example? Like, where would you say would be the best kind of area to go out and? try and get into the, uh, the business? I, I don't know if there's any benefit to trying to seek out a specific center. A lot of what I do, especially locally here, is my directors are on my headset, they're either in Vancouver, they're in the States, they're, I mean, I don't need to go anywhere except where there's a decent facility with an engineer. Oh. So the rest of that can happen anywhere in the world. Um, I, I guess, you know, I'm a firm believer in going where you're wanted, not where you think you should be. So, Calgary's been good to me in terms of my acting career, and I've got no interest to replace myself somewhere else. But um, larger centers can offer you different opportunities. But in voice, it sometimes doesn't really have the same boundaries, hmm. because you can do it from anywhere. And a lot of people do really good work here, and then they move out there, and they continue doing the same work. Okay. Fair enough. So what would be the point in relocating? So, uh, I was just asking because it seems like there's an awful lot more interesting stuff going on in Vancouver than Calgary. <laughs> oh. Show-wise or, you know, on the beach? <laughs> I was going to go with the first one. Now that you mentioned, yeah, definitely both. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, if you want to live in the West Coast, I'd move. <laughs> Do you like the rain? Yeah. I love the rain. Okay. Come on down. <laughs> then you're, you're going to be happy. <laughs> <laughs>